Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln, which is in England. And in this video, I wanted to have a look at the subneptonian radius valley. And this is where there's a lack of planets in the subneptonian group of planets, basically. So what we're going to do first is have a quick look at subneptonian planets, what they are, and why there might be a lack of planets somewhere in between that sort of range or in the subneptonian planets. So there's lots of different sorts of planets that we've discovered so far, lots of different categories, types. Hot Jupiters, they're the big ones close to stars. They're hot because they're close to their star. They're Jupiters because they're big. You've got cold Jupiters, cold gas giants. You've got ocean worlds, ice giants, a bit like Neptune, things like that. Rocky planets, which are terrestrial planets. And you've got lava worlds, which are you know, rocky planets very close to their star and their surfaces are basically just magma oceans or lava essentially. Now the ones we're interested in for this video sit approximately here on that sort of plot. These are subneptonian planets. Now subneptonian planets are smaller than Neptunes but they're also larger than Earth. So they sit in this group here between Earth and Neptune basically. So a subneptonian planet Mass wise, they can be between one Earth mass and one Neptune mass. Now, one Neptune mass is around about 17 times that of Earth, so that they typically sit in this range between one and 17 times the mass of Earth. That's what would make it a subneptonian planet. But size wise, they have radiuses between one Earth radius and one Neptune radius. Again, that keeps them subneptonian. They're, they're basically less than Neptune, essentially. And that means that they're between one and four times the radius of Earth. Now, they can be hot and they can be cold. There's no distinction, really, between where they are and their star. It's just down to their size, really. So if they are cold, they're probably going to be further away from their star. You can have them hot right up close to their star. It is going to affect, actually, how they will evolve which we'll have a look at a bit later on, but if they're very close to their star, then they're going to be quite hot and they will they will lose their atmosphere e more easily than a colder one, basically. So if we have a look at all of the subneptonian planets that have been discovered so far, we get a bimodial distribution of them, which basically means we get two groups. Instead of there just being uh, a range of planets in that mass and size range, you get two distinct groups. So on this plot here, along the bottom, you've, it, you basically have the radius. So this is the size in respect to Earth. So you can see planet size and Earth radii. You then also got on the y-axis, that's essentially the fraction of planets at that radius. And you've got one that I've highlighted as being green, which is more like the super Earth or Earth-like group. So between one and one and a half Earth radiuses. Again, we would probably classify those as they're more likely to be a super Earth or Earth-like. Then you've got the blue group, which is the larger group. Those would more likely be classified as actually subneptonium because they're closer to Neptune in sort of size. These are approximately between two and three, three and a half times the radius of Earth. So you've got these two distinct groups. You need this bimodial distribution, really, of what we've actually discovered anyway. And there's a very clear deficit of planets around about one and a half times Earth's radius, which is called the, the radius valley, basically. Because if you look at it, you've got kind of a, a dip in the distribution there. So there's a lack of planets there, which was a bit of a surprise because you'd expect it to be reasonably smooth through there until we started to, to discover them and find that actually there's a sudden kind of drop at that particular radius. Now, why might that be? Well, it could be down to an evolutionary phase. So it could be that the larger group actually is evolving into the smaller group. And where the valley is, that central bit where there's a lack of planets, it doesn't spend a lot of time there. So when we actually look for planets in space, you've only got a short period of time to discover those ones in that group there. So we're going to naturally detect less of those than in the other two groups where there's likely going to be spending a bit more time. Or there's going to be more of them there. So what's happening to then make one evolve into the other? Well, subneptonians have lower mass than gas giants. That's true for both groups. But for the larger group, they're going to have quite significant atmospheres. They do, they do have a rocky core, but they are, their gravity cannot hold on to their atmosphere in the same manner that a gas giant would. So a gas giant has a lot greater mass. Its gravitational force is able to hold on to that larger atmosphere um, 
basically just better really these sub neptunian planets have lower mass so they have quite extended large atmospheres but they just don't have that gravitational force to hold on to it so what happens is the atmosphere leaks out into space over time and it kind of leaves the planet so the planet or the atmosphere is lost it gets smaller it then becomes this other group so they actually evolve into super earths or more earth-like planets basically over time so you end up with a where you get a sub neptunian planet and billions of years later you will likely get a super earth instead now the rocky core which are assumed to be in sub neptunian planets remains as it was it just loses its outer atmosphere which then makes it shrink down so this is what we think is basically happening and why we're getting a transition from one to them and what causes that radius valley basically and that process is then thought to give rise to these two distinct planet types and there's a lack of planets in the middle because again that it's only going to be doing that for uh, some period of time so to capture that in the process is going to be relatively rare so you're then naturally going to detect the two groups and not the transition the bit where they're transitioning it's just going to be rarer basically it's, it's probably a observational bias as well um, so you get these two distinct planet, planetary groups so thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos